you might have observed and wondered about it too. A stacked data structure and a queued data structure, they always go hand in hand, right? In fact, in our previous video, we just discussed how you can implement a queued data structure just by using the stacked data structure, right? So naturally, a question comes to your mind. Can you also do the opposite? Can you implement a stacked data structure just by using the queued data structures? So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will go over the problem statement and we are going to discuss what all operations do you need to implement. Going forward, I will tell you two methods how you can implement the stack data structure by using two queues or just by using a single queue. After that, as usual, we will see a step by step demo and also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. The problem itself is very straightforward. You have to implement all of the operations that you would do on a stack data structure. But the only catch is that you have to do this using only queue data structures. So this is tricky because a queue works on the policy of first in first out. It simply means that if you have a queue like this and then you have some elements coming in, let us say you get four, then a eight and then a 15. So four came in first, so it will be the first element to get out. So this gets out first and 15 will get out at the last. So basically a queue is simply like when you're standing in a line. So the first person who comes in the line is the first one to get served, right? But in a stack data structure, it is last in first out. If you have some elements like four, eight, and then a 15. So 15 comes in last. So when you pop out element, this element is the first one to get out. And this is the last in first out policy. So you have to perform all of these operations of a stack data structure using the queue data structure. That's it. So let's see how we can proceed about it. When you start to solve this problem, you cannot say that, okay, I'll come up with a brute force way and then try to optimize it. What you can do is you can try to sketch out things on a paper and then try to compare that, okay, this would happen on a regular stack. And this is what is happening when I'm using the queue data structure. So using the same ideology, I will try to come up with a solution. Over here on the left, I have a stack data structure so that I can actually see what all operations am I doing in my stack. And these same operations should be mimicked when I'm using the queue data structure. So right now I am using two queues for my help. And I am hoping that, okay, maybe this way I will be able to achieve the same operations. So what can we do about it? Let us say I have some push operations. I have these four push operations, push four, eight, 15 and 16, right? If you have your stack, how do these elements go in? So first of all, you will have a four, then a eight, then a 15 and then a 16, right? And now what you can do is you have your queue data structure also. So when I add these elements to my queue, they get added over here, four, eight, 15 and then a 16. Notice that the elements are linear in both the data structures. But now let us say when you do a pop operation, if you do a pop on the stack, you will get 16 out, correct? But in your queue, what will happen? Four will get out because this was the first element that came in. So somehow we need to mimic these two scenarios. That is where our auxiliary queue will come in handy. What we can do is we need to reach up to 16, right? So whenever we say pop, what do you do? We will take each and every element of my queue and we will start adding these elements to my second queue, right? So what am I doing over here? I am taking an element, I am popping it and I am pushing it into my second queue. This is the order that I am following. So once again, I will do this. I will take out eight and then I will push it into my second queue. Up till now, I have performed these operation two times, correct? So the idea over here is that if you have to pop an element, let us say your queue had four elements. So you will perform this traversal n minus one number of times. So if you have four elements, do it three times. What do you get? 
I will do it one more time. So this element gets out of the queue and I put it into my second queue. I am done with three iterations. Now look at what number do I get when I pop from the queue. As soon as I pop, what do I get? I get a 16, correct? And what are you getting from your stack? You get a 16 again. So this is how you were able to mimic the same operation using your queue data structure. So now 16 has popped out, right? And what we're going to do is since we have completed this operation, we are going to swap Q1 and Q2. So Q1 becomes Q2 and Q2 will become Q1. So once again, you see our scenario is almost the same. Let us say I have one more pop operation. Now what happens in the stack? In the stack, 15 will get popped out. But if you look in your queue, if you simply do a pop, four will come out, but that is not what we want. What do we want? Q1 has three elements. So for doing a pop, I need to perform my traversal again and I will do it n minus one times. That is two times. So I will take out an element from my queue and then I will push it into my other queue. Once again, I will take out an element and I will push it into my other queue. I have done this operation two times. Now pop out the element. What do you get? You get a 15 again. So once again, you have mimicked your operations. So basically what we are doing is whenever you have to pop an element, just look at how many elements do you have in the queue, do n minus one operations and pop out an element from your queue and push it into your secondary queue. After that, the last element that you get, that is the expected output that you were desiring to mimic the operation. So we are done with these two operations now. And once again, what do you do? You swap out Q1 and Q2. We are doing this swapping because if you write the code, it should be consistent. It should always mean that, okay, you remove elements from Q1 and then push it onto Q2. That is the only need for it. Just to understand things a little bit more, let us say my next operation is push 23. So what happens in your stack? 23 will get over here, right? And when you are pushing elements, what do you need to do? Just push elements to your Q1. So 23 will get over here. Correct. And now once again, let us say you have to pop out elements. So for the first element you pop out, you get a 23 and in your queue, what do you do? You have three elements. So you will do the traversal two times. And when you do it, you take out four and put it in your next queue. Then you take out eight and you put it in your next queue. What element are you left with? You are left with 23 and then you pop it out. So now once again, both of my operations have been mimicked. Similarly, if you perform the pop operation two more times, your stack will be completely empty and your queue will also be empty, right? So if someone asks you, Hey, how do you implement the is empty function? Then you just look at both your queues. If both of them are empty, you can safely say that yes, your stack data structure is empty. So this is one approach where you are using two queues. One is the main queue and one queue is just a helper queue, right? Your interviewer can now ask you that, Hey, can you achieve all of this just by using a single queue? So that is one improvement. Let's see what we can do about it. Once again, on the left side, we have a standard stack data structure. So this will help us to mimic the operations in the desired order. And as you remember, we just have to use a single queue this time, right? So let us try to proceed. I have four push operations first. So I add four elements to my stack. What about your queue now? You cannot simply add all of your elements to your queue this time because then this method will not be different. What we basically need to do over here is let us start to add elements one by one. So the first element that I add is four. Since it is a single element, you don't have to do anything about it. The size of your queue is one. It will behave the same if whether it's a stack or whether it's a queue. So don't do anything. Now comes the next part. The next part is when you are adding a new element and that is eight. So when you try to add the element eight in your queue, your queue starts to look something like this. What happens is now when you pop out of the queue, four will come out. But if your stack looked like this, we wanted that eight should come out, right? This time we do not have a helper queue also. So what we do is, if your queue size is greater than one, then 
let us say your q5 is n you do n minus 1 and then you will pop out any element that are in your q n minus 1 times and put it back in your q from the other side you will get it so right now you have two elements so what you need to do is just run a loop for n minus 1 time that means just one time what do you do you pop out an element from the queue and then you add it back to your same queue so now your queue ends up looking like this think about it this was your stack you have two elements four and eight and this is your queue now if you have to pop an element eight comes out and if you have to pop an element eight comes out so this is the same operation right let us do one more push in our queue my next push is 15 right when I had a stack, 15 would get over here like this. But in our queue data structure, what do you do? You add a 15 first. And then remember, what did I tell you? Look at the size of your queue. You have a size of 3. So you want to perform an operation two times. And what is the operation? You pop out an element from your queue and then insert it back. So what do you do? You pop out 8 and then you insert it back in your queue. You did this for one time and then do it again. Pop out an element from your queue and then insert it back again. You did it for two times and now look, if it was your stack, then what would get popped out? 15 would get popped out. And now if you have your queue, what will get popped out? 15 will get popped out. So this is how we are maintaining the balance and we are mimicking the same operations that you would have expected on a stack data structure. Taking one more example, I am trying to push the element 16 to my stack. So this is how my stack ends up looking. For your queue, what will you do? You will take the element 16 and you will add it. Now the size of your queue is 4. So 4 minus 1 equals to 3 and you have to perform this operation 3 times. What do you do? You pop out an element and put it back in your queue. You pop out an element and put it back in your queue. Do it for one last time. You pop out and put it back in your queue. You did it three times and look at it. If you have to pop, you get a 16. And if you have to pop, you get a 16 again. So now you can easily say that I am able to mimic both the operations. Let us do some pop operations now. If I do a pop on my stack, what do I get? I get 16. So 16 gets popped out. And what about the queue? 16 will get popped out from here as well. So once again, the same result. Let us do one more pop. 15 gets popped out. And what about your queue? 15 gets popped out. Once again, the same operation and we are mimicking it, right? Now let us try to push an element. This time I'm pushing an element 23 to my stack. My stack ends up looking like this. What about your queue though? In your queue, you will first push the element 23. And now look, you have three elements. So you have to perform the operation two times. And what do you do? You take out an element and push it at the back of your queue. You take out an element and push it at the back of your queue. So this is how you can go about mimicking the same operation using a queue data structure. If you now try to pop out all the elements, you get 23, you get eight, and then you get four. Your stack is now completely empty. Even from your queue, you get 23, then you get an eight, and then you get a four. Now your queue is completely empty. So now if you want to implement the is empty function, you can just look at your queue. If your queue is empty, that means the stack is also empty. So this is another effective way how you can implement all the functionalities of a stack data structure just by using a single queue. One thing to notice over here is that when you use a single queue, the push operation is very resource intensive because for every push operation, you will keep on rotating elements, right? And this can end up taking a lot of time. Whereas if you remember in our previous approach, the push operation was not heavy. If you have to push elements, you just keep on adding to your Q1, right? Only when you have to pop, you are using your secondary queue, correct? So this is what you want to take care of. If you are going for a lot of push operations, then it is always better to take the help of a secondary queue. Whereas if you're looking that, okay, I will do a lot of pop operations, then this approach is very helpful because when you're popping, you don't have to do any recursive iterations, correct? So based upon all of these thoughts, only then you should come up with an idea. 
Let us now try to quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement your stack using a single queue. And on the right, I am having some push operations that we will be trying. And this is my starting queue that I will use. Also, I am taking a stack over here, but this is just for reference, just to verify that whatever we are doing is exactly what we desire. So first of all, what do we do? First of all, we initialize a queue, right? Now, what you need to do is you need to implement the push function. And if you look at your push function, what happens when I do a push for in my stack? When I do a push for, four gets added over here. And in your queue, what do you do? You add this element to your queue. Four gets added to your queue over here, right? Currently, the size of queue is one. So you do not have to do any rotations. Let us try to push one more element. When I add one more element, my stack ends up looking like this. But what do you do in your queue? In your queue, you add the element eight. And now the size of your queue is two. It is greater than one. So this is where this particular loop comes in handy. Just look at it carefully. We are running it n minus one times. And what do we do? We remove an element from the queue and then add it back to the queue. So Q dot remove will take out four and then Q dot add will take this four and add it back to your queue. So when this operation runs one time, four gets removed from here and it gets added at the back. Similarly, if you try to push a 15 now, 15 would get added to your stack like this, but in your queue, you would get 15 over here. And then this operation will now run two times. What will it do? It will take out this eight and it will push it back at your queue. And then once again, it will take out this four and push it at the back of your queue. So this is how you are maintaining the same order of operations, right? If you have to pop an element, what will happen? 15 will get popped out, right? And in your queue, what do you do? You simply do a queue dot remove and 15 will get out, correct? The next two functions are fairly simple, top and empty. Top simply means that you're looking at the top element. So you read it, but do not remove it from your queue. And if you want to find if your stack is empty, just look in your queue. If your queue is empty, return a true, otherwise return a false. So what about the time complexity? The time complexity of maintaining such a stack data structure is order of n, because this is the most expensive operation. Whenever you're trying to push a new element, as soon as you push, it will take some time to remove all the elements and add it back to your queue. And the space complexity is also order of n because you need that extra space to maintain your queue. All of these other operations just happen in an order of one time. I hope now you have a very good understanding about how you can implement a stack data structure just by using queues. As for my final thoughts, I just want to say that these kind of questions, they are not very tricky. They just try to gauge how well you can think and how well you can come up with new solutions using the resources you already have. At the same time, always make sure that you are asking your interviewer all the relevant questions. Do ask them, hey, how many queues do you want me to use? One queue, two queues. And what is your primary focus? Do you want to push more elements or is your operation more pop and peak heavy? That is how you can switch the implementation that you want. And your interviewer will also be happy to know that, hey, that you are thinking all of this. You are looking at the bigger picture. And that always helps. So while going throughout the video, did you face any problems or do you know any other innovative way how you can achieve this same functionality? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments as well. So stay tuned for my next video. And until then, see ya.